So the issue I'm raising today is the need for comprehensive tax reform that would stop corporate tax dodging and limit tax competition. And I believe it's important that Ireland is a strong voice committed at OECD and at home to address the challenges of taxing multinationals in the digital area, to put a stop to corporate tax dodging, end the race to the bottom in corporate tax and incentives, and very especially generate additional revenues where the ac economic activity takes place. And I think that's particularly important for Ireland to be that voice because of our commitment to the least developed countries. Because the reality is that the current system does not benefit developing countries, some of whom are our partner countries. And they need the income from corporate tax to provide badly needed services in health and education and agriculture, and also to mitigate against climate change. So if the corporate tax system is not fair to them, and we know that it isn't, then we are depriving those countries of the ability and the capacity to raise revenues through income tax and, this is to, and other taxes. And this is totally at odds with our policies as conveyed in a better world. So the reality is that there are multiple loopholes in the international tax system which allows for artificial profit shifting to tax aggressive jurisdictions. Loopholes where profits generated from sales and other digital activities in one territory can be largely untaxed untaxed. Loopholes that mean little profits to the countries where the actual production of goods takes place. A loophole that will allow countries to offer lower and lower corporate taxes in order to be attractive to investors. And loopholes like tax holidays because of pressure from foreign nationals. And a couple of examples, from one from the pharmaceutical industry. In seven developing countries, four of the big US pharma companies have avoided an estimated 96 million euro every year. Some of them are paying very little tax on profits in Ireland, even though they have significant profits in Ireland. We have multinational corporations who are paying less tax than they did before the crash in 2008, and they continue to shift as much as 40% of their foreign profits to tax havens. And the IMF put a figure of 456 billion lost to governments because of corporate tax shifting. So, and there's also the fact that on that inclusive framing steering group, the least developed countries are very underrepresented. So my question is, you know, as we are committed to a better world, and as we have that very strong reputation for our humanitarian work, will we also commit to supporting a minimum effective tax rate in every country, which which would mean an end to tax havens and would benefit the, the developing world. I mean, you did mention Ireland and all countries, but I think it has to be acknowledged that all countries have not had a fair deal to date. And yes, the BEPS initiative has had some significant benefits, but it's actually not going far enough because multinationals continue to benefit from transfer pricing. You know, the double tax agreements, um, they favour residence-based over source-based, and it sees, that sees capital flows from the developing countries to the developed countries uh, instead of the other way around. And it was very disappointing to, to learn that the concerns of your department officials were, were ignored when it came to the Ghana uh, agreement, because before that agreement, Ghana could levy 15% on royalty payments, 20% on technical fees. But after the agreement, it was 8% on royalties and 10% on technical fees. Therefore, Irish companies investing in, in Ghana and other countries will be benefiting from lower rates of taxes. And I mean, that has to be at odds with our national plan on business and human rights. You know, and I go back to the point that we're so respected in one area that I think we have to be also respected for supporting a fair corporate tax reform so that the developing world can raise the income that they need. In other words, at the end of the day, that would eventually mean a reduction in overseas aid if they can raise the money that they need for the services.